And welcome back. As recently as 1995, the city of Bethlehem was roughly 80% Christian and 20% Muslim. Today, those numbers have reversed. Christians are a minority in the town of Christ's birth, and life is often difficult, especially for born-again believers in Jesus. Now one Jewish organization is stepping up to help. Here's the inside story of how they are blessing Bethlehem. The purpose of the project is to help the evangelical Christian Palestinian Arab population in Bethlehem. Uh, it's a population that is, that is really suffering from a very high rate of unemployment. About 65% of the church is, is out of work, and they really are, are suffering for their faith, a faith which includes friendship and love towards the Jewish people, which is very unusual and, in fact, dangerous in the area that they live in. Because we stand on the Word of God, the Old and the New Testament, as God's Word, we stand with the covenant of God, with the, with the land of Israel, with God's chosen people. We uh, face a lot of persecution and a lot of attack. One of the attacks that our church was bombed 14 times and I was shot for bullets uh, because it's taking stand for uh, telling the whole truth about God's word. And we came up with this idea to create a project where we would go to all the churches that we know and people in the Jewish community that we know and we would start to raise funds so that we could provide food assistance for the members of this community that are needy and out of work and need the help. In 2016, we launched the project and we called it Blessing Bethlehem. And ever since then, every Wednesday night at the church in Bethlehem, uh, there are over 150 families that receive a food package to help them feed their family for the week. Uh, that, that is coming from a cooperation of Jews and Christians uh, who, are, who are sowing into this work. And that's really what, that's what real peace is all about. That's really where the love you know, begins to grow. Here is the point. I want you to understand that when leadership have in mind to really change the minds of people to a better understanding, concerning the Jews. That's where we started. Myself, my son, Pastor Tim, we start to teach people how we can cooperate with the Jews, how can we love them, and how we can work together. And when you plant the seed of peace and harmony in the hearts of the mind of people, you're going to have a good result. And the result is to sit together at the same table and to fellowship and to have a good time. That's exactly what we did. When Moses spoke to the people of Israel over 3,300 years ago, when they were about to enter the land, and he said to them, when you go into the land, there will be others there who want to live in peace with you and you must love them. You must love the stranger. I don't like the English word stranger because it sounds like strange. Uh, but it really means the other, someone who's not part of your nation. Even the, the biblical vision of Israel in our land includes other people from other nations who want to live there in peace. And we're not just commanded to tolerate them, we're, to, we're commanded to love them and take care of them. So I said to myself, you know, Moses wasn't just talking to the people of Israel over 3,000 years ago, he's talking to me. Whose responsibility is it to take care of these people if not me? How much more so that they're suffering because their faith dictates that they love us. Even they uh, had uh, a Christmas party for our people. Can you imagine this Jewish organization uh, prepare a Christmas party for our people to go to Jerusalem and have a Christmas party there? That's awesome. That's, that is real love. And that is real uh, cooperation uh, together, good, building good bridge of peace and reconciliation between 
a Christian, Palestinian, and Jewish people. The reaction that I get most often to the project, to Blessing Bethlehem, is that Jews say, wow, I did not realize that there was a community of Palestinian Christians who love us. I did not realize that they were evangelical Christians living in Bethlehem. I did not realize that there are those who don't hate us. And once I explain the situation to them and they realize that these are people who are suffering because they've chosen a path of faith that draws them closer to us, that's why they're suffering. When they hear that, they want to help them too. Up next, we're told by Israel's critics that it's a racist, apartheid state. But one desperate young man from South Sudan found otherwise. Now he's advocating for Israel at one of America's most prestigious universities. He shares his unlikely and incredible story after the break. Don't move.